Oh, hello, it is I, Ian Higton here, and once again I seem to have stumbled into a rather awkward situation. I've been looking for seven reasons why the Blair Witch game could be better than the films, and in doing so, I've only gone and gotten lost in this incredibly spooky and surprisingly very red forest, so uh, that sucks. Oh well, at least I've got a nice doggo here to protect me, I guess. Wait, oh my god. What the hell was that noise? What have you done, Ellis? Yep, without a doubt, the one thing that definitely makes the Blair Witch game better than the movies is Bullet, your trusty canine companion who accompanies you throughout the majority of your adventure. Granted, all the films in the Blair Witch series have their fair share of good moments, but none of them come anywhere close to the magnificence of being able to give the bestest of boys some well-earned belly scritches. I mean, just look at this. When the game first starts and things are at their least spookiest, you and Bullet are merely tracking a lost boy through the woods. But as you get deeper and deeper and things get creepier and creepier, your bond with Bullet may be the only thing that keeps you alive. Controlling Bullet is easy enough though. There's a command wheel with five different options on it that range from seek, where he'll sniff out clues for you, to stay for those extra scary moments when you need a bit of company. Now, Bullet is pretty obedient, but he'll occasionally wander off and do his own thing. And by own thing, I probably mean we. If that does happen, you can call him back with a quick press of the stay close command. And if he does it right away, you can totally reward him by selecting the pet command to deliver some good boy pats to the head. Yeah, good boy. Now, there's also an option in the command wheel that allows you to reprimand Bullet. But in all seriousness, if you pick that one, then, well, quite frankly, I think you deserve everything the witch has in store for you. Something wrong, buddy? While Bullet is meant to be your lovably loyal pal, he also hides a sneaky game mechanic that helps to ramp up the tension in certain sections of the game. When threats are lurking in the dark depths of the forest, Bullet will begin to growl in their direction, alerting you to the threat. Now, obviously, having this furry early warning system is rather useful, but at the same time, suddenly hearing Bullet growling at an unseen threat is more than enough to start your panic juices flowing. <laughs> The Blair Witch movies have always been rather open-ended with their lore, and the Blair Witch game expands on the creepy mysteries of the series in a variety of different ways. The game, just like the films, is set in the Black Hills Forest in Burkittsville, and with that forest comes the usual things you'd expect from the movies, like stick totems, surprise piles of stones, and a long-limbed monstrosity that stalks you from the shadows. Now, it wasn't until the 2016 Blair Witch movie that you actually got to see that monster. In the original film, you didn't see anything at all, and the running theory is that the creature you do see in the 2016 movie is actually a transformed version of Heather, the lady with the runny nose from the original film, who is now under the control of the Blair Witch. I love you, Mum. Dad. According to various fans, the Blair Witch is actually a force that inhabits and controls the woods, hence us never actually seeing it in the films. And it's able to brainwash humans and bend them to its will. Near the end of our gameplay footage, we come across what we believe to be the transformed version of Heather from the 2016 movie, as we're told by writing on the wall that looking at her will cause us to die. And in fact, this is the exact reason why the human characters in the films also stand in the corners and stare at walls. Not that it ended up doing them any good. It also looks like the Blair Witch game will be introducing a few new monsters to the lore too, like this big mouth beardy jump scare bastard. There's also a few new locations in the game too, so it's not just some woods and the witch's house like it is in the movies. 
During one of the chapters, Ellis and Bullet end up inside the twisted trunk of a gigantic tree, and in another chapter, they explore the interior of a spooky sawmill. And you know that nothing good ever happens in a spooky sawmill. Shh, shh, shh. Quiet, boy. We're not alone here. Rather than just being a straight-up creepy walk through some creepy woods, the Blair Witch game also gives you some puzzling to do to break up the action. These range from the simple, we've seen it all before, find a code, enter a code puzzles, to a much more interesting videotape mechanic that takes more than a little bit of inspiration from the VHS version of the shockingly bad Blair Witch sequel, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. At the very end of Book of Shadows, a bonus feature appears in which a narrator talks about the secret of Esrava, which is reverse spelled backwards. Viewers were instructed to play the whole film in reverse from start to finish in order to unlock a secret code which could be used on the Book of Shadows website in order to access an extra scene from the film. You are now about to unlock the secret of Esrever, where you will discover mysterious and haunting ghost-like images. It was a pretty cool idea, to be fair, especially back in the day when the internet was still accessed via dial-up. So it's a shame, then, that the film itself stank like a cauldron full of witch piss. In the Blair Witch video game, this rewind feature is expanded on massively and it actually allows you to control the world around you, hopefully to your advantage. Camcorder tapes hidden around the game world can be watched in your camera, and if you pause them in the correct places, it can cause things in the game world to change. For instance, pausing here when the door is open in the video allows you to access the interior of this creepy barn. It's a novel approach that feels quite fresh to the video game horror genre, but it also leans a little on the time-warping themes of the other two Blair Witch movies. Unlike the movies, and coincidentally, unlike any other previous Bloober Team games, like Layers of Fear or Observer, in the Blair Witch game, you can actually fight off some of the enemies with a simplified form of combat. In this section, where Aoife and I were being stalked by a lightning-fast tree-beast Wendigo thingamajig, we were able to use our torch, Alan Wake style, in order to keep the creature at bay. In the movies, the characters basically just pap themselves and then shaky cam their way through some trees for half an hour. But for the game, Bloober Team wanted it to be more than just a running away simulator, and hence these combat light mechanics were born. I've got no idea what other nasty creature encounters the game has in store for us, but the ability to stand our ground and defend ourselves added a whole new layer of panic to the proceedings. What was that thing? While the Blair Witch movies are generally passive experiences that pass you by while you watch them, the Blair Witch game has a bunch of items for you to find and collect. Meaning you can take the story at your own pace and go off for a little explore every now and again. There are plenty of these totems dotted around, which you'll remember from the movies, and these can be destroyed when you find them. And there are also these spooky Polaroids of people facing into the corners of a spooky house. While these pictures are pretty creepy to look at, these are actually fun Bloober Team Easter eggs, and each person in the pictures is actually someone who works at the studio. Or at least they used to work at the studio, before the witch got them, I guess. Unlike the original movies, where there can only really be one ending, the Blair Witch game has several different endings that are triggered by your actions throughout the story. While we weren't told specifically how many endings there would be, we were told that there were two main endings, with more than five different outcomes that depend entirely on things like how many collectible totems you found and destroyed, and how you've acted towards other characters. For instance, how you treat Bullet will affect his ending, and things will work out differently for him depending on how much you use him for just straight-up gameplay stuff like fetching clues, and how well you treat him personally. For instance, keeping him close and giving him lots of strokes, or just letting him wander off on his own and reprimanding him loads. Answering or not answering phone calls from other characters like Jess and the Sheriff will also affect the ending in certain ways too, and there are also specific times when you can phone these characters yourself, which if either missed or done correctly, 
will also alter proceedings. Which, to be honest, is terrible news for someone like me who hates answering the phone in real life and always lets it go through to voicemail just in case that person phoning is some kind of dodgy scam artist. And finally, good news for all you blenophobia sufferers out there, there was absolutely no sign of any slimy nose mucus anywhere around. Not from Ellis, not from Bullet, and definitely not from Aoife and me. Wait, we have to get like an up-close nostril shot. <laughs> See, that may not be our best angle, but at least our nostrils aren't leaking all over the camera lens. Oh no, it looks like my trip to the forest has gotten me cursed and killed by the witch, and now I am nothing but an invisible ghost. Oh, woe is me. This is what I get for trying to find interesting video game information from within the depths of a haunted forest. When will I ever learn, eh? Well, if you think my sacrifice was worth it, do like this video, subscribe for more, press F to pay your respects now that I am a goner, and do check out this playthrough of the Blair Witch demo that should be up on screen to click on right now. If you want to watch past Living Ian yelp his way through 30 minutes of gameplay alongside Aoife Wilson. Right, I'm off to find somewhere cool to haunt. Whoa, being dead and invisible is weird.